Welcome back to the big board. Let's have a look at World War 85 again. I thought what might be fun, given that now uh, things are starting to ship out in the US and people are getting their copies, I am going to walk through this uh, scenario, scenario 21, Whirlwind, uh, which is set in West Germany, uh, obviously enough, but uh, set in West Germany, and go over, while we play, go over some of some of the mechanics, a little bit of the rules, but more fo focus more about in on uh, some of the tactics and strategies that I've used in uh, World at War in the past, and hopefully they'll still apply to the new system. Or you know, it's as I've said before, it's <clears throat> largely the same game style and tactical style. There are some differences, but if you're new to the game, you're not going to know the difference anyway. And if you're a, a veteran of World at War, you'll pick up the differences really quickly. So first things first, with this scenario, there are three, I'll call them task forces, uh, for want of a better term, to uh, defend the situation. And it's a somewhat of a meeting engagement where uh, American, uh, you know, US uh, NATO forces are looking to conduct a counterattack and in essence punching uh, using, let's see which four, I guess it's both of these forces. It's a scratch force put together and then task force orange, which is a 311th ACR. Uh, so task force orange, the um, scratch force here, and these guys, I guess, are really being used more as a, a reserve or defensive uh, set of units, mainly because of the, mix, the force mix that I'm seeing more than anything else. And we'll get into all the what's, what's where, what's in what, uh, what units are provided, et cetera, in a second. But we've got three, three forces, and for the Americans, they want to capture this string of hexes from D down to here. Uh, you know, you know, sensibly, this is going to you know block supply, you know, block the advance of the Soviet forces. So the Warsaw Pact <clears throat> have already, however, they're conducting their race to uh, the rivers and the bridges, and they have crossed here, and they're in the water actually, making an amphibious move across the river, and they want to capture this zone, this hex, this hex, and this hex. While at the same time, units from this scratch force as well of T-80s over here, a couple of uh, BTR-60s and some infantry uh, with an 82 millimeter mortar, so uh, 10 platoons of uh, T-80s are racing to this hex here, just to the very extreme left of the screen. And their, their goal is to get eight intact, undisrupted units off the map out of the 14 that are available. They've got to be either APC or a tank uh, that, has, that has to exit, right? So if that happens, now uh, it starts, uh, is it really clear? Let me see if it's clear regarding, yeah, you know, it doesn't say from what formation, so arguably B and P's from here could certainly assist in the in the exit procedure, right? So these dice on top of here represent the range with which these units are allowed to set up and you know, anywhere within three hexes. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. I'll do that off camera off camera because I'll, I'll change my mind 50 times. Uh, <clears throat> you know, looking at fields of fire and stuff like that. There's some cobras, there's some arty support for both sides. There's air support for both sides. It's a 20 turn scenario. And uh, let's see, you know, that's kind, of the, that's kind of the structure of it. It's an interesting little problem slash puzzle to solve tactically because this is a pretty hefty force. It's 10 BMPs with 10 platoons of infantry. So, you know, what's that? That's, uh, it's, you know, it's, that's a lot. How many is that? Three, so it's gonna be three companies. It's gonna be a battalion of uh, forces here. And then you've got a battalion over there, and then we've got these sort of, you know, this scratch pulled together uh, set of guys trying to 
arguably trying to you know, make a, a swift counterattack to slow down the advance, but we'll see. Uh, here's what's interesting though. So you look, this is pretty much the entire map area we have to play on. I'm gonna scoot over a little bit. One thing I just noticed here, <clears throat> and there are two bridges here as well. And there are no more forces coming on at the moment, but given that I've got to keep this hex here and capture these, you know, maybe maybe there's something to be said for having a plan to try and flank uh, if I can stay in command range and all the rest of it, and then allow these guys to stage forward a little bit or uh, let this be captured and build a defensive zone around this. Oh, we're, we're off screen, sorry. And there goes the camera. I'm really struggling with camera stands at the moment. We've had, uh, and I've gone through a number of them and can't find one that is working the way I want it to and lets me get close enough. Uh, this hex here, you know, we could, uh, we could abandon this hex <coughs> or let it be taken and use this force here to defend the hill, defend this hex at, at range, yeah? and uh, potentially assist in defending this hex as well. If we choose our, our locations carefully up on this hill, we'll have uh, potentially fields of fire going this way. We'll have ability to shoot units as they attempt to scoot off the map here. They have to exit off this through this, this roadside here, uh, which is interesting. If I can get a kill, two kills on here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bog up that hex uh, and that will, uh, that will end in the scenario for the Russians. So they're gonna to have to be careful with that just because of the way the stacking works. Um, stacking's enforced at all times. So there's a, there's a curious wrinkle in that. I would probably allow, you know, if, if, that, if that were to come to pass, maybe you allow units to exit here and here as well. We'll see. Anyway, this is a good zone to do some defense of this township here, <clears throat> excuse me. This, this uh, township potentially as well, probably also not as important. Uh, the victory conditions for the, for the Russians, as I mentioned, not only is it getting eight units off here, but, but controlling these three hexes. Uh, so they, they've got to do a lot and it's, uh, it's significant. Now this, so this uh, set of guys here, it's all uh, M1s with a, uh, a Vulcan in support uh, for anti-air. And, you know, they have some choices to make too because they could, you know, try and rush this zone here, take on the BMPs, you know, get in close, get in under the BMPs uh, firing range, which is three. See the, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. If we look at uh, that black triangle, means that their missile, their ATGM, has to have a range of three or more to be effective. It, it can't fire a closer range than that. So if we wanted to scoot in quickly, that would be an interesting, uh, interesting tactic, but we'd be scooting in quickly into the city terrain, which is really beneficial to infantry fighting against tanks, puts us at a risk there. So there's some consideration there. So maybe we stand off here and, uh, see where the Soviets go. Are the Soviets gonna push hard this way or are they gonna come this way first and then around to here and protect this exit mechanism going on that's gotta go on? So if they do do that, what do we do? Do we try and interdict this movement or do we get over here and go toe to toe with the T-80s? I don't think this force has any Bradleys in it. I'll just check here. Oh, it does, it has uh, two Bradley, yeah, two Bradleys, the Vulcan, and then one, two, three, four, five platoons of M1s. Not M1A ones, M1s. They'll be there, so we've got to work out how we're going to handle these guys, those guys. Now, these guys here, they have a pretty interesting mix of forces as well. So we've got Dragons, we've got uh, a Sam for AA. We've got a long range mortar unit basically 
We've got a cat that just jumped up on the table. That's pretty awesome. What are you doing down here, kitty? So we're sitting on a map. Fortunately, I keep them covered. <laughs> All right, back to this. Where were we? Looking at units, right? Uh, here. I'm sorry, you guys probably can't see any of that. Let's zoom in a little bit for you. All right. And then there's a swag of infantry, three, I think, three platoons here. Then two Bradleys, three Bradleys, four Bradley platoons, four platoons of infantry, five platoons of infantry, and a tow, and a tow jeep. So that's not a bad little whack of guys, all great shooting at range. So I imagine the first turn, we're going to look for positions that we can shoot at range, try and stay out of trouble with the T-80s, and uh, you know maybe race over here somewhere. Uh, who knows? We got to we got to work that out. We got to work out how we're going to handle handle the defense there. Now, and how we handle the Cobras as well will be interesting because they can really they'll they'll cut through. BMPs like butter because uh, they have a very soft save as you can see all right we'll uh what we'll do now let's see so you we've, i think i've explained to you here that we have just it's all infantry with some rpgs and all bmps there's nothing fancy here i think there's some aa uh yeah oh, well i've got this artillery unit with a range of 55, which is pretty nice. <clears throat> One of the other factors that the Soviets and the West Warsaw Pact have to consider is where will they place their Spetsnaz that can arrive on turn four, five, or six. It's uh, three platoons with uh, two SAGA units, and I think it might have a uh, some sort of AA unit, yeah, an SA-7 uh, uh, weapon, right? So. Part of the decision-making cycle is with Victory Hex just below the screen, one here, another one here. Do they want to support and reinforce the T-80s coming on, or do they want to try and help the three companies of uh, infantry and BMPs that are crossing the lake? And that's something I haven't really noodled through yet. And I need to uh, need to come up with a, a proper plan for them. And I think something I'm leaning towards a landing somewhere around here. But who knows what could be happening by turn four over in that part of the world? Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's better to employ them as a blocking force here or a supporting force here, so that these guys have a little more firepower. I, I don't know. Maybe uh, landing in right in the middle here could be good. Let me know what you think about that as well. Cheers. Okay. So I think uh, I think that might be a good place to to pause it here. Let me go set up some units. Uh, we've got our handy dandy lock and load tray for all the information counters, and then this is our track that we're going to keep track of the turns. And the artillery strikes available, and we'll we'll run our cards here. The formation deck will be handled from there, and we'll uh, we'll get after it. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, all the best.